In this tutorial, we address different kinds of lenses and which tool to use for what purpose. In this first example, we're using footage shot with the Panasonic GH4 camera and the lens is Panasonic 7 to 14 mm wide angle for micro four third. We have this wide angle footage and it's pretty decent for a wide angle lens shot, a lens with over 90 degrees field of view. There is a bit of stretching at the edges though. We can see how relens will help this shot. First we add dfish and set the method to fish pincushion. You'll notice that it's now a little too curved on the edges. We can turn auto scale to off and reduce the warp percentage with the amount slider until the horizontal lines are straight and not overstretched. If I zoom in on the lower edge you can see that it's aliased. We can fix this edge by adjusting the edge anti-aliasing from 0 to 3. Now we can scale to 1.1 to get rid of the black. Also, if I set my viewer to 100% and we look at this pine tree, you can see the effect of adaptive sharpening if I set it from 0, 0.0 to 3.0. In this next example, we have a 50 millimeter 2 to 1 anamorphic lens on a Panasonic GH4. This was shot at UHD 4K 3840 by 2160. What this lens allows is to have super wide angle image aspect ratio. Before using it, you need to unstretch the footage. Because it's a simpler transformation, a stretch in one dimension will allow us to talk about certain things without the complexity of a more complex lens projection. Let's take a look at this footage straight out of the camera shot with this anamorphic lens. You can see that it's squeezed, it's 2 to 1 pixel aspect ratio. Since this is still a rectilinear image and we just need to unsqueeze the footage, we make a comp and apply relens reframe and set the comp to 3840 by 1080 for now and set the output size to comp size. We set the mode to aspect ratio and set scale Y to 0.5. And because we're scaling down, we choose Mitchell triangle because it's a good scale down algorithm. If I play a short section, you can see that there is some stabilization to do here, which brings the topic of workflow or what order to do things in. Although the shot is relatively clean, there is still a bit of noise in the dark areas. If you scale up the images, so scale is over one in reframe, you absolutely want to denoise prior to reformatting the anamorphic image. Otherwise, the noise becomes bigger. So we're talking about the order of operations. We need to denoise prior to scaling, but if we are color correcting, color correction often doesn't care if it's before or after spatial reformatting. But you may as well do it on the smallest image so it processes faster. Although you probably want to do it after denoising. So that would be denoise, color correct, then scale. Blurs, of course, need to be done after stretching, otherwise they'll also be stretched. Here we have a 1920 by 1080 comp, as we're going to pan and scan, which is a typical reason to shoot 4K, even if going out to 1080p. We reframe to transform, and in this case, as we'll zoom past the 1.0, Lanzos 3 becomes a good filter. Now, because we still need to retain the ratio of scale x to y, we simply add an expression to scale y in the timeline and change scale y to scale x in expression and add uh, multiply 0 0.5. So scale x will control scale y and they'll always be two to one. Of course, there are three by two and four by three anamorphic lenses. So the proportionality would change then. So here we have animated offset X to pan and scale X to zoom out, in and out again. We still have the stabilization issue, so we would need to stretch to something larger than our final resolution so the additional resampling doesn't cause too much blurring. Stabilize, then pan, then scan the stabilized version. And of course, this is because the image cannot be rotated before it's stretched. A combination anamorphic fisheye example is GoPro Super View mode. So let's see an example of that. First, we're going to take a look at this carnival footage. 
to see that SuperView stretches the footage horizontally. It's a form of software anamorphic mode, which uses more of the sensor to capture the image. We can see this little diagram that GoPro provides to see what the super view is actually doing. And that will help us for this next example. For this project, we have the warp amount scale in X as a value different than Y scale in the additional controls. It's at one by 1.3 right now in X. This is how you compensate for the anamorphic in DFish. If I turn it on and off and change the warp amount in X to 1.0 and then back to 0.75, you can see the difference. It should be at least 0.75 in X and 1.0 in Y or 1.0 in X and 4 thirds in Y. In this example, we're using footage shot with the Panasonic Lumix 8mm fisheye on a GH4. We're going to use Relens DFish plugin. An 8mm fisheye on such a small sensor only uses a small portion of the lens curvature. So this is why there is some curvature, but it's not so extreme. Such a full frame fisheye can be handled with the Relens DFish. Let's find a frame where we can see the house curvature well and we add DFish to our footage. We set the method to straighten. Okay, now we want to DFish this shot to possibly add flat graphics or maybe to stabilize the shot. First, let's set the comp size wider to 4500 to reveal more pixels. We can set auto scale to off and scale to lower than 1.0. We can use 0.9 and adjust the warp amount until things look good. I can turn DFish on and off to see the difference. For this circular fisheye, we have two examples. You can choose which way you want to go depending on how much vertical space you need to pan around in. You'll have plenty of horizontal panning real estate in either example. In the Superfish Example 1 comp, we mounted the Sigma 4.5mm fisheye lens onto the Panasonic GH4. Because the sensor is two times smaller than a full frame camera, you need a lens with a small millimeter amount. Since there's no lens like that for the Micro Four Third, you have to use a lens adapter. Because we see the edges of the image circle, it's circular fisheye video. So using the Super Fish plugin makes a lot of sense here. We have set the output to 1280 by 720. Our source is 4K UHD, 3840 by 2160. The lens is equisolid projection, fisheye projection method. We set the output to comp size. Now we shift the view mode to set circle over source and we look for a frame where we see the edge of the image circle best. Our task is to make the red circle align to the edge of the image. You can press the Alt key on Windows and the Command key on the Mac. You can pick the edge of the circle to control the radius, the size of the circle, and elsewhere to move it. Note, careful not to release that hotkey as otherwise you'll actually move the AE transform. If you do, just press reset on the layer transform. Okay, now we can animate the pan, tilt, and roll. That's a lot of reframing opportunity. Of course, as we have seen before, some sharpening would help here. You can also zoom using the focal length parameter. For this example, I use 0.8, so I have a much larger field of view. Of course, if you go much lower, like 0.5, although it starts to overstretch the edges. So this is why no one makes rectilinear lenses over 120 degree field of view. What you do in this case is raise the unflattened slider for a better look. In the second example of Superfish, the Panasonic GH4 is a sophisticated camera. It can actually shoot video with different image aspect ratios. For example, here we have a 2880 by 2880 aspect ratio 1 to 1. This works out well for this application as 2880 is a lot more resolution to start with than 2160 pixels high and a lot less black to save to our disk. With most micro four-third cameras, it's a good idea to use a focal reducer such as a Metabones, which will not only act as a lens adapter, but will also optically reduce the size of the image circle. These usually vary between 0.63 and 0.72. These allow us to capture the whole height, which is useful if you want to do vertical rotations as it extends the possible vertical field of view captured. 
so it's not cut off as in the previous example. Of course, the value of using superfish is for the reframing possibilities in post. So let's see how much more vertical real estate to animate the camera we have using this option. So we set up the shot the same as the previous example. However, here the horizon is not correctly aligned. In the additional controls in such case, you can use a first set of rotation called orientation to adjust that. If you do that, it will make it much easier after to do tilt, pan, and roll, as otherwise you might need to animate two rotations per keyframe to control your point of view. Okay, for fun, now let's set our comp to 3840 by 1080. The edges are a bit too stretched here, so we increase the unflattened parameter. Now the edges are way too soft, so we increase the sharpening. It's called adaptive sharpening because the amount of sharpening is a function of how much stretching is happening. Now we will move on to our next example. In this example we can see that some lenses have more than 180 field of view. These lenses require a completely different math where a portion of the sphere is projected to a rectangular flat image. That's why we have the superfish effect. So as we've seen before this lens is 280 degrees of field of view and its equisolid projection. We have set our comp to 1280 by 720 so you can see the image at 100% for this tutorial. And we set the output size to comp size. Now we go to set circle over source and adjust the circle radius and position. We can use command on a Mac or alt in Windows to interactively change the size. I can also center the circle by pressing anywhere in this area. You can see the source, center, x, y change. What we're doing here is setting up where the actual optical center is. We can go back to result for view mode and you can see that it's easy to animate pan, tilt, and roll and focal length parameters. In this case, because the lens curvature is so large, we set a good negative 90 to 90 degrees of horizontal rotation to move in at focal length scale of 1. If the focal length goes below 1, you might need to use the unflatten option to get rid of some of the distortion on the edges. So we've just seen a nice range of examples to show you some of the tools you have to work with using the ReLens plugin suite.